Contract management seems like a daunting undertaking when faced with scattered files and missing spreadsheets. The financial benefits of contract management are worth the effort. This video provides a roadmap to get your organization from messy to managed contracts. To manage contracts effectively, it is important to embrace three basic principles. These principles ease the transition to contract management and to help deliver more value from the contract portfolio. Principle one, a contract is not a document. A contract is not a document. Certainly, most business contracts are reduced to writing and are therefore a document. A contract, however, covers the entire legal relationship between you and the other party to the transaction. Even in simple contracts, often consist of more than one document. For example, the contract might contain the main agreement, a related non-disclosure agreement, a schedule, and an amendment. All of these documents are important to understand the entire contractual relationship. Principle two, the contract portfolio is more than a list of contracts. Organizations often manage contracts on a case-by-case -case basis. This approach misses important commonalities and risks that cut across contracts. One of the hallmarks of effective contract management is the ability to see those commonalities and risks across contracts without having to read each individual contract. It is useful to classify contracts correctly to identify those with legally significant provisions and to link contracts to counterparties. Principle three, contract risk is measurable and manageable. You can begin to apply principles of legal risk management to further improve and optimize financial performance once the contract portfolio is in place. The contract portfolio provides data about the likelihood of certain risks because you can measure the number of contracts containing the relevant provisions or signed with the party in question. With those principles in mind, it's time to start managing contracts. Let's break the challenge down into three phases. One, get organized. Two, capture important details, and three, analyze and control our contracts. In phase one, we wanna get organized. There are two steps to organize contracts when you do not have any system in place. First, we need to assess the current situation. These sorts of questions will help get you started. It's not meant to be an exhaustive list, but it will help you look for the data and documents you need to begin this journey. First, are there any spreadsheets listing contracts in your organization? This is very common, that there are spreadsheets, at least one, floating around that lists or inventories the contracts uh, that are outstanding. Two, if so, how many spreadsheets are there? Is there one centrally managed spreadsheet or does each department or group keep its own spreadsheet? Three, where are the contract documents stored? Are there paper files or are contracts stored electronically? or in all likelihood, a mix of the two. Four, if documents are stored electronically, are they stored in a central location, different drives or folders, or on individual computers? Five, what is the scope of your contract management effort? Are there important limits? For example, are you only tackling expense contracts, but not revenue contracts, or maybe the other way around? Answers to these questions will help you gauge the size of the project. You are driving toward a central repository, every contract in one place. To accomplish that objective, there needs to be one spreadsheet with every contract listed, which is within the scope of your project. The second thing we need to do is create a classification system. Contract management leverages several classification schemes. Start by classifying contracts. The trick is to develop a list of contract types that is neither too short nor too long. Classifying contracts merely as revenue or expense is probably too simplistic for most organizations, although tagging a contract as revenue or expense is quite useful. Contract schemes with 30 different types and subtypes sprinkled in are impractical for most organizations and effective reporting. Target 5 to 15 types of contracts at the start. Your list might look something like this. Confidentiality agreements, business development, employment, 
equipment and supplies, financing, information technology, real estate, sales, and service. Your organization might differ. Some of these may not apply. You may want to add others, but keep the list manageable. The next classification scheme to consider relates to documents themselves that you will manage. Remember, contracts and documents are not synonymous. There might be significant variation between organizations, but here is a list of document types to get you started. Addendum, agreement, amendment, correspondence, insurance certificate, invoice, letter of intent, memorandum of understanding, other, permit or license, purchase order, schedule, statement of work, subcontract, and work order. This list might be too long or not appropriate in your situation. Feel free to modify it to meet your needs. The list of document types should be grounded in your business practices and contracts. Now that you've assessed the situation, collected your contract data, and classified your contracts and documents, you're ready for phase two, capture key details. Collect consistent data about each contractual relationship. Not every contract is the same, but the kinds of data we can collect about contracts are strikingly similar. Here are some facts that you can probably gather about each contract in your portfolio, regardless of industry or geography. First, who are the parties to the contract? The parties to the contract are the people or companies with whom you are signing the contract. Parties are also called counterparties generically. Most contracts only involve one other party, but multi-party agreements are not unusual. The important thing is that these parties are not parties that you control or manage. They are on the other side of the table, as it were. Second, what type of contract is this? Choose the contract type from the classification list you created in phase one. If the deal is a non-disclosure agreement, then you would mark the contract as confidentiality type of contract based on the classification above. Short description. It's not essential, but later you might appreciate having a five to 15 word description of each contract for easy reference. Internal structure. What do we mean by internal structure? You might want to track the legal entity in your corporate family that is signing the contract. This entity is different from the party above or that we talked about earlier. Imagine that you have a parent company, Parent Co. Inc., and Parent Co. Inc. owns Subco A and Subco B. If Subco B signs the contract with the other party, then you might want to flag the contract as between Subco B and the party. It will help your reporting down the line. Some organizations also like to track de the department handling the contract. Tags. It's often useful to have semi-structured data in the form of tags to designate contracts as revenue or expense related. Or you might mark them as related to a business unit or a particular geography. Next, you might want to include notes. These are comments on the contract that are more verbose and elaborate than the short description. It's best to note who is making the note uh, and capture the date and time of the note as well to make sure that it's still relevant. Dates. It is imperative that you capture the effective date and the expiration date of the contract. Some contracts do not have an expiration date because they are evergreen or auto-renewing. Tracking those kinds of contracts, those evergreen and auto-renewing contracts, are especially important. Amounts. It is tempting to think that tracking contract amounts is an obvious detail to capture. It might be. However, contract payments and amounts owed are best left to accounting systems. Even technical connections between contract management systems and accounting software through an API can generate more questions than answers. The second issue with contract amounts is that a single value is hard to determine when there are formulas, payment schedules, or contingent amounts. If you want to track amounts, consider just a high-level value for bucketing the contract. For example, you might have contracts over a million dollars as a bucket. Whether this one is 1.5 or 1.2 doesn't really matter, it's over a million. Or contracts that are under 10,000 are just marked as under 10,000. 
that bucketing will help with you reporting and manage the contracts and leave the accounting to the accounting systems. You can see an example of this data and download uh, in the free contract management spreadsheet we'll link to. It's not as comprehensive as LexTree, but it will certainly get you started. Phase three, control and analyze your contract portfolio. Now that you have all your contracts in one place and a basic set of data about each contract, you can begin to control and analyze those contracts. The reporting and analysis each organization needs will differ. Here are some questions you might answer based on your newly organized contract registry or portfolio. So now that you have all this data, what can you do? You can answer questions like, when contracts expire, what contracts expire in the next three months? And as a bonus, which of those have auto renewal provisions? Which contracts are in each contract type? How many confidentiality agreements do we have? How many sales contracts do we have? How many business development contracts do we have? How many contracts do you have with each party? As a bonus, where the contract amount is greater than an amount you care about. So show all the contracts with a certain party or parties that's over a dollar amount. Which documents, not contracts, have indemnification clauses? Note, this might be hard with just a spreadsheet, but with a contract management application, you should be easily able to identify which documents have things like indemnification provisions, provided that you're tagging them with those clauses. The bigger point is that you can now ask and answer questions about the collection of rights and responsibilities that cut across the entire collection of contracts in your organization. Congratulations, you're on your way to better contract management.